brother, my brother-in-law attends that university. I support all my family. <laughs> um, we all know the NBA is trying to um, return soon in July, and they're going to say they're going to have 20 to 22 teams return. Which style do you prefer? They were, they were discussing ways that um, either have a play-in style or a group stage style similar to the World Cup. I, I don't like the This needs to be handled expeditiously. <laughs> I, I agree with Derek. I don't like the group stage. I don't, I don't like, like that at all. The, the only way the 22 teams works to me is if it's the top 11 teams from each conference and they're letting them fight for the last two seeds or something like that. One through four or one through six shouldn't even be a question as to who, do they get in. The Lakers, the, the Bucks, the, you know, the teams that deserve, we knew was going to the playoffs. It shouldn't be a question as to do they make it. But I don't like the fact that they're not including all 30 teams. But, like, because, okay, say the – who I'm thinking fight the Wizards might be fighting for a playoff spot. Maybe if the Wizards had the Hawks on their schedule, I would like for them to be able to play the Hawks still. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be like, oh, you play who's here. And it's like the Lakers shouldn't have to be in a, a tournament to determine if they make the offs when we know they was going to the offs. So it's just that's my issue with it. But if they gonna let them maybe the pe- the teams that was on the bubble should do a a group stage and they all play each other and you can use that to determine which one of them get in. Yeah. And I also don't think they should do the thing they even talking about because they didn't want to do it in the first place. It should be one through eight and one through eight. It shouldn't be one through 16 like March Madness bracket. The March Madness bracket bracket would be cool and probably fun to watch, but I probably not want to do that from the jump, so don't do it now. But I thought you was a fan of them doing like no more conference, conference list uh, scheduling. I am. But it shouldn't be right now because you already let them play in conferences. So you shouldn't just you gotta do that. You gotta start that. You gotta yeah, start off for the fresh season. Yeah, you can't just do that in the mid, like late like that. And I mean, I, don't get me wrong; they're probably gonna end up doing it anyway and not care and do the one through sixteen seeding or whatever. And they're gonna get hella ratings because it ain't nothing else to do. People gonna watch. It's gonna be fine. But it's gonna be lame that they did it mid season instead of from the jump. So, for instance, if the Lakers get bounced by the Bucks, and they shouldn't be playing the Bucks to the finals. It's gonna be lame. It's you know, like lame. On the bracket, though. It will be the Bucks, Lakers will be one seed, Bucks will be two seed, um, third seed will be the Clippers, fourth seed. Who the second seed in the East? The I think side. Toronto will be on LeBron's side, in the Lakers side. I mean, so like, okay. I don't want it to be a East team knocking a West team out, or a West team knocking an East team out. When in reality, they wouldn't have had to play them if the season was just. Yeah, but on regular, got you. Yeah. I think I think people are getting a little bit too complicated with the solutions for the NBA. This this needs to be handled like very expeditiously. We've already missed the summer, you know, damn near. So just the one I, I don't know. I would really just want to see the season's over right now. Like cut the season, it's over. One through eight, one through eight. If there's if there's like a tiebreaker situation, maybe situate that. But I don't, but see, my issue with that Mace is teams were still battling for the AC. That's the problem. I think it should I mean, be the top. Clinch, that's lame that you can't be like, oh, the Grizzlies get in. When Dame and Portland was only two games back, and B.I. and Zion was only three games back, you Xing them out. And at the same time, if you do that, you got superstars that you Xing out of your play that people actually want to see instead of them earning you. And if you X Zion and Dame and them out, you're going to lose ratings. And Dame already said he's not playing if he's not playing for the playoffs. So he just said he's not coming at all. He'll stay at home the way he at. I think the ratings. I think the ratings won't work for, for especially during this time period because nobody's watching any form of sports really. Yeah. Well, too, but I'm saying like, bro, when Zion play, you know how people do, and Dame is a superstar now. When he play, you know how people do. Yeah. Alvarado is on his way. Don't get me wrong, and I like Memphis. I just don't think they should be given that opportunity without playing for it. Also, Devin Booker and them are the uh, the 11 seed, another superstar. It's just. You can't just – Someone's going to make an off, so. I mean, it's an unforgiving situation. Someone's going to be X'd out. It's, you know, That's what I'm saying. Like you can't please no, You shouldn't X nobody out. It's just – it's a competition sport. You get paid for playoffs. You got all this stuff you're doing, so make it work. If you're not going to have all 30 teams, they're fine. But the 8 through 11, or whoever got a chance of missing, should be able to have some type of play in for that. Playing tournament they're referring to with the seven through like the eleven they're like so that's what they said they'll they'll play in but see that's laying for OKC OKC probably wasn't gonna miss the offs okay oh, OKC's not the six seed the seven seed is the Dallas Mavericks 
Oh, the Dallas fell to the seven? No. Nah. <laughs> I'm not saying, but teams like that, like older teams, and you know, like they bodies, bro. Like certain people are not probably working out like they should be or whatever. That's why they're trying to make it a month or two. That's like on them. That is on them. But that's why they say it's starting to you July. You got to stay in the house. Bro, some of them, bro, some players don't have it. Like Le- LeBron got a full gym in his house. Everybody. I mean, bro, they, they have access to the training and practice facilities because they're private. He started it. But they're going to give them a month in advance to prepare for a play. They're not going to just jump them right yeah, in. That's true. But, like, Trey Young, I mean, it's going to be hard not seeing him because he's a good player, but they, they were the last – so near last. So and the reason why they're not trying to have all thirty teams is because they they say player health and team health is the number one uh, priority. So they they don't want all thirty teams centralized at one location because they either they're playing the plans are that they play in Orlando and at the world uh, world sports of Disney. I forgot the name of it. But like all of them gonna be in Orlando. So they don't want all the teams to just be and they there. try to bring their families too. Yeah, and like, what if an outbreak occurs there and all the teams will get affected? They just want uh, just the just the, the people that's in the bubble, that's on the bubble for the playoffs and the playoff teams to be there and continue to have a seven-game series for each um for, uh, for this in, uh, NBA season. Do you think uh, – do you guys think the winner of the finals or or any other award like MVP or rookie of the year, coach of the year, will it be look – look like five years later from now, taint it because of how the season went? I think it probably will. I mean, certain people are going to talk their trash, but – do I think it's deserving? No. It's an unforgiving global pandemic. Like, what were, what were they supposed to do, bro? You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's, 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 not like this, it's not like this disease, this, this, this issue is favoring some people over other, others. Everyone's equally being uh, marginalized more. That's maybe not the best word to use. But everyone's being negatively affected by it. So, no. If, if, if you, I mean, I have no issue with how many games on average did uh, the NBA complete, like, per team? I want to say around 60. It was around 60, yeah. You know, being the MVP of 60 games, bro, you, that 60 games, that's three quarters of the season. That's fine with me, bro, because we couldn't finish the season. So if you was not, if you was, if that's where you were at that point, and that, that kind of ties into my philosophy as to why, why I feel as though you just, you should just cut it at eight. Because, I mean, if you were truly contending for the playoff spot, as in like not, you know, not tanking or anything, then you were, if you're in that six, seven to eleven range, you were playing to win all season, and you were still in the seven to eleven range. So, but that's that's and then and then the, these guys are going to be playing extra games, and then it becomes more of a, a fatigue slash ethics issue. Like these guys are playing more games when the other guys are at home, and yes, people sit when they you know make the playoffs and whatnot. But there's a whole issue there. You're going to have are these people going to be more warmed up. You you get to you get to asking a whole bunch of questions. How many extra games do those? teams have to play those teams who are who are seven through 11 they're not going to only be playing four more games it's going to be like a process it's going to be about 12 to 16 more games more than likely so like it's, it's they probably it's, all have to play each other once like in the playing style or all the NBA, all the teams in the but i get what he's saying about the fatigue and stuff and that but at the same time you know the, the season takes you know it's up and down so zion is 20 some games Dame missed some games. That's what that's what plays into that. Bradley Bill played the whole season by itself, pretty much. Like that mattered. And he got in stride. He was before the season that was hot. He was on some like MVP numbers hot. But he wasn't gonna get MVP. But you know what I'm saying? He was balling. And then like a team like the Heat that's young, it's gonna they shouldn't just sit. I think they should do something, they should be doing something too, because Young team, and you throw them in the playoffs, and they playing a veteran team with people that know how to manage they they load and stuff. They gon' they gonna get beat up on. But I like the point that Mace brought up. Let's like similarly, like, similar similar to how like the March match, man. Like the team gets hot. Momentum. So how would that work if like one through six the playoff teams they don't play, they just wait to the playoffs, right? But seven through eleven they play through the uh, the playing stage, and now they they warmed up and hot. And they got momentum. They and they somebody faced the Clippers in the second round. They might knock them off because they play more games. But I think they're still gonna be playing. They're just not gonna be playing to be in. They're just playing to play. In my philosophy, it's all or nothing. Either everyone finishes the season or nobody does. So, because who says the cutoff at eleven is fair? Why can't the cutoff be twelve? Why can't it be thirteen? You know, yeah, it, it, it's you add a lot of nuance when you try to include everyone. 
they that's were, because it's, their teams were already eliminated. They were mathematically not not possible making it. And they prior they trying to prioritize the player and team health as well. That's why the teams that think that the NBA they never had a shot like right. playing right now, they would they cut them off. Like for the Hawks, prioritize player and team health. You gotta cut it. That's why if the Hawks was to make it, the Hawks would literally have to win every game, and then like they would need a bunch of teams to lose games. So teams like that aren't even having an option again. That's what I'm saying. But to the point, both of y'all points that y'all making about um, listen. See, I'm a Ravens fan. I know what happens when teams don't get to play for two or three weeks, and then they get into the playoffs. Like you know what I'm saying. I I, I know firsthand how that looks and how that feels, bro. So, <laughs> so like, I think. They should just let them play them. Let them all play each other once. And that could determine the seeding. But I don't know who, like, it's just, if they cut it, it's going to be bad. So I think maybe they do a play-in for the last spot or two. Let them do that quick play-in, and then everybody play each other once, and then start to start whatever you're going to do. JB, you were shaking your head. What do you, what do you think? What if you did, everyone play 10 games, the top 16 teams, no, yeah, the top sixteen teams in the in the league, like completely, just go in and you just do attorney style, That's like it, NCAA no. attorney style. Attorney would be lame. It shouldn't be nothing cross east conference. It's east west. It should still be east west to me. Yeah, I think the, the coronavirus thing should not be an opportunity to start experimenting with that. Like, like right we, now, you do that, you do that with a, you do, you make decisions like that with a fresh slate. This is the farthest thing from a fresh slate. <laughs> when they do that in December, they talking about starting the next season in December, and then bring this to us in December. Don't do it now. I agree. That's like the NFL. They changed it to 18 games or 17 games now, but they're not doing it now. They're going to wait a year. You can't, but they are adding the playoff spot. It's going to be seven teams in the playoffs now. But that's not really changing the way the game is played. It's just changing the amount of teams in, and the number one seed is more important. The number one seed is the highest value now. I have a question. Where, where, um, because you know, in terms of the NFL, I'm not changing the topic completely, but I just don't know the answer to this. So, you know, an NFL schedule, you're composed of your division rivals and then a, con a, a NFC conference and an AFC conference, and then like where you were in the in your division yeah, with an AFC. Yeah, with this where is the 17th game coming from? I, I have no, no I have no, we, no we, <laughs> I, 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 I don't, bro. I was looking, I was like, how the does this make sense? Yeah. Um, only thing I could think of that would be easy for them to schedule and easy for me to remember as like when I do it in my head is you're going to end up playing an, another team in your conference two times. So the Saints, for instance, we play – what division we play this year? The, uh, in the AFC North. North. NFC North. We played NFC North, and we played the uh, Niners because they finished first. Mm -hmm. And we played uh, – um, who else finished first? The uh, Eagles. Eagles finished first. We play the Eagles. Then the second, the seventeenth game could potentially come from the number one seed from the conference we play. So that would be the Packers, I think, right? Or the Vikings. The Vikings were number one. When? In that division. Who won that division last year? Packers. The Packers. The Saints would play the Packers twice. One in Green Bay and one in New Orleans. I had the. Uh, that would be the only way I could see them adding that extra game because it, it doesn't need to be cross conference. Cause that's stupid. I think they, that's what they should do. I think. That, I think it should be cross conference. I think, like, let's say that the Niners finish first, the Ravens finish first. They play each other. Then the Chiefs finish. Who finish second? But yeah, I'm like that, like one through sixteen, you match. Finish second. Packers finish second. They play. Saints finish third. The Texans finish mm -hmm. third. They play. Like, oh, one through sixteen, match each with each yeah. other. And if let's yeah. say, let's say that's the, the ratings. That's my. That's probably what it is. Yeah, let's say uh the we like the Saints play the Chiefs, right? Yeah. I say like they they have to play each other. Could we play that division? They have to play each other twice. That's what I was thinking. That would be, be really cool. cool. That'd be cool. That would be that'd be fine. I hope that's what they do. <laughs> that's good for ratings. My idea would be my idea is kind of straight, but it's just like not elite, elite level. It might not be elite. Yeah. That would be the perfect way to make sure it's something prime time. Like week seventeen is prime time week. Every yeah. game is. Or uh, or they could do it like how, let's say for like playoff like. Um, contention and rankings. The less like last year, the Niners and the Packers. They both thirteen and three, thirteen and three. Packers play the Packers play the Niners, and the Saints will play the uh, the Eagles for like seeding. If that may, kind of makes sense, but I, I see the flaw in that one because the Saints will play like eight and eighteen. The Eagles finish eight and eight. 
and the Saints, the Saints were 13 and three, while the Niners and the Packers were both 13 and three. They played each other, so like the Saints were low key out, like an easy way out per se. Yeah. But I think the AFC yeah. NFC one that I said that would be a good one for them to uh, use. Mm. I hope that's what they do. I hope they do the the matchup on the conference rankings. That that sounds pretty cool. Uh, si- uh sign me uh, NFL. I just brought you billions more dollars. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's all my sports news. Um, do y'all have any sports topics before I give it to Derek for the music? 